out high. And Hunt delivers it low to Larry Johnson. Good little pass to Augman. Slam dunk to get it started on the scoreboard. Inside, because there won't be a lot of help on the double team. Vegas goes zone. Todd Day will take the three. He's a good one. Augman spins past Day in the corner. Hunt, he can shoot the three. He made six of them last year in the game against Arkansas. One on a wing to Morris. Surprising, he shot that ball straight in. They used three is Ackles over Miller. No, nope, partially blocked by Miller. He has Bowers. Blocked by Hunt for the foul call. Ever at Arkansas will set the career and seasonal records in time. You can see his timing. He stayed down on the floor until Ackles went ahead and made his move. And then went up and beautifully not only blocked the shot, but kept control, which he probably does as well as any shot blocker in the country. So Bowers can make it a three-point play with this free throw. As long as that ball was in contact of the hand, I don't know how they could go ahead and call goaltending. No, I don't understand that one. But Bowers gives Arkansas the three-point lead early. Miller. Showing quickness again, batting it out of bounds. Billy, he set the single season block record in the game against Houston this week. Drive in the lane and dishing to Miller. Loose ball picked up by Johnson. Oh, they saw it coming. And a foul call on Johnson. Johnson was trying to get the ball over to Greg Anthony. Without question, he got him with the body. And we see two different bodies going up against each other here in this one. Larry Johnson, one of the strongest players in America. Day is 75% free throw shooter. Top score on the team, 22 a game. He now has five, and it's a five-point Arkansas lead. Stolen by Miller. The four on three. Day high in the air. And a foul called to the shot by Hunt. That's it for the shot. They'll bring it in underneath. Four fouls on UNLV, none on Arkansas. Little off-balance shot by Day. Doesn't drop. Anthony one-handed up to Augman. Another dunk for Augman. Surprisingly. Where did you think this game was headed, Billy? Well, we know that Nolan Richardson wanted to play at full blast on both ends of the court. It looks like UNLV would like to turn it into more of a half-court game. Mayberry missing on the oh, turnaround. What a pass. It's a hunt. <laughs> what a pass. That There's that solid screen coming up by Miller. He can set him, like you said, Billy, and Mayberry loses control out of bounds. Turnover by Mayberry, but you gotta love this point guard matchup today between Anthony and Mayberry. Hey, you can see how much they're concentrating on the play. There it is. And they got it over Morris, and Johnson banks it home. That's a, an old junior college matchup between those two today. Well, he's turned to work on day. Takes the step. Oh, oh. Miller helped strip it free. Saying that was a super play. Augman had beaten Day to the hoop. Day almost, yes, forces the steal. Arlen Bowers has it, and he'll go ahead and lay it in. Now Ackles not getting into play. Almost another steal, but it sets up now as a four on one. Ackles, whoa. <laughs> Block that one. <laughs> Lobbing it over Ackles. Perfect. And Miller. Perfectly timed pass. Pass in. Little zone pressure. Back to Ackles. Floating down the lane. And another basket for Ackles. Four quick ones. Day at the other end. Offensive. And they gave him a scholarship for the second semester. But this year he came back as a walk-on again. Boy, Johnson is clearing out some people in the low post. Anthony drove on Murray and scores the basket. Early in the ball game, trying to get the second win, but they don't need it yet. Miller delivers it out high. Murray on the three. There's the walk on. Ernie Murray is Augman. And Oliver Miller called for the foul. Three-point field goal percentage. And that margin of victory is, is one that uh, has stood for a long time with the great UCLA Walton clubs. But it had a sure lay-in. Instead, it's a three-point shot. Murray missing. Quick outlet again to Anthony. Three on two. Augman. What we're having right now is UNLV starting to get their break going because... 
Jim, that could be a factor. If UNLV can release three men. Dropping it in to the seven-footer, Elmore Spencer. Oh, boy, they just keep coming up with they great do. players, don't they, Billy? And that's going to make Miller work against two fresh people. On Fury in and makes the 15-footer. Has come back well since then. Johnson working on Roosevelt. And a foul called on Arkansas. Well, I like a lot of things about this team, Jim. We watched them practice yesterday. They've got great camaraderie between this team. There's no hot dog in them at all. They all pull together. That's along with Billy Packer. Pat O'Brien coming up at the half. But Leslie Bissler joins us right now with a report. Leslie? Jim, in the last time out, Jerry Tarkanian told his team to tell him if anyone gets tired not to rush their shots and for the centers to look for the high-low. On the opposite end, Nolan Richardson told his team they've got to stop the fast break. We'll look for it, Jim. Our team that on the year is being out-rebounded. The high-low post is to get Larry Johnson open, and there was a case. Another great block. That time by Morris. Defensive uh, back. Oliver, Oliver Miller yeah. could be whatever he wanted to be. And Larry Johnson may be the <laughs> thickest player in college basketball. Spencer on the block. Fury gets it back. Gets the pass underneath. Miller slam dunk. This tied. 11 minutes to go first half. Anthony on the jumper. Too strong. Rebound underneath Johnson. He'll lay it in. He's the top scorer for the running Rebels. 23 a game. Quickly at the other end. A steal by Spencer. Will Hunt dunk it? Yes. And just sending two men long. Another turnover. Bowers threw it away, and Morris was cutting to the basket. Great hard-nosed man-to-man. -man. Illegal screen by Spencer got away with it. Hoffman throws it away. Sixth turnover on the running Rebels. Day got a screen for a moment, so Johnson makes the switch. Miller is there for the offensive rebound. Anthony finds Augman on the baseline. That's three dunks in the first half for Augman alone. And another errant pass by the Razorbacks. But that's the way they play. Jim. They're going to force that ball up the court on all, all occasions. Normally wearing the other club down, but Vegas is in excellent shape, and they're deep, so I don't believe that's going to be a factor in this game. Here's a guy that's been 20 minutes of play in a game. Here he'll have a chance. Oh, as he goes up for the dunk, Miller takes a piece of the arm. Two. Two on Miller now. The half. Here's another basketball player with a baseball background. He was a third round pick of the Astros in 87 was ever. High school football player. That's where he got the nickname. And Miller. Score it. And a foul. Again, the good pick and roll move. Curry doing a nice job because Spencer had to come over to to help out and the key to that again perfect timing Spencer had to commit needs a bodyguard but how does he come to Barnhill today he's got two policemen one of these side he looked like Frank Royals <laughs> after a winning football game Great what a save. save by Anthony and Spencer wasn't ready for it Miller snaps it today dunk time now what's happening a problem in their alignment. Spencer is too often in a position to be the ball handler in the middle, and he's not capable. Good run by a pressing team. Back in for UNLV. Day was disappointed. He wanted free throws, but they brought it inbounds underneath. Well, the miss three and the rebound fight. Gray is called again. That's his second. Open up the floodgates in the recruiting area of Memphis for the Razorbacks. He was Nolan Richardson's first big-time recruit here. Mr. Basketball in Tennessee. Hunt, to me, is always the forgotten guy on this team. MVP of the Final Four was the MVP of the matchup against Arkansas last year when he had uh, 28 against him. Greg Anthony wide open here. They got it over to him. Hits the side of the backboard, and now it's a two-on-one. Day will shoot it over Hunt. Soft rebound comes back today, missing the short one. There's a principle of verticality, a very well played situation by the defense and by the referee not to call a foul. Blocked by Miller. Day has it. Three on one. Lobbing it to Hury. 
Four point Arkansas lead. Here. Not a good pass. What a catch. Ackles somehow came down with it. Now Miller today. What a pass. That's the largest lead of the season on UNLV. A six point lead. Here comes Day. Nobody's got him. Floating free for a three. There it is. Too strong. Rebound by Johnson. And a three on two. Augment. Boy, he altered that shot in the air. Now, what, what's happening? They're an awful lot of what they try to do in practice and in their, their defensive structure in the game. Bowers, three-point shot. Gurry coming in for the rebound, crashing, but no rebound. It comes to Johnson. Another outlet to Augment. In the corner is Hunt for a three. In and out. And Bowers almost had it. Ackles. Oh, what a push. Move. Yep. Todd, they can't believe it. Type of pace. So I would say that because of the rule change, that uh, statistic probably doesn't mean as much as it should. Defense now, 2-3. Locked from behind, but they call it a foul. They say Anthony got him on the top of the head. Gives a little slap. 6-1. One. One. Chris Corsiani leading the nation in assists. Outside of the three, he's open now. Got it back over to him. And the perfect three by Hunt. Against the zone, and what was it? Past Hunt. And Larry the rebound, Johnson. Johnson sees a man up ahead. It's Hunt. Mayberry takes him out. And oh, and he still finds a way to get it down. And it may be intentional. Should be, Billy. Yep. And, but I don't know. We talked about the baseball pass. Larry Johnson with a flick of the wrist. Throws it about 60 feet. No question it has to be intentional. Shot goes. Larry Johnson just fired that ball on a line. He's thrown more strikes today than Walter Johnson ever did. <laughs> Hunt misses the opportunity for a three-point play. They got just enough of the... In that particular case, Anthony coming from behind. It's so difficult as a jump shooter knowing that guy is chasing you from behind. You feel first move on. Now watch, here goes the first move. Then he has the second move. And Day went in on the first move, giving Larry Johnson another opportunity on that one and one. You want to be stays in the zone. Day, Day is calling for the alley-oop, but Murray takes the three and makes it his second of the game. Hunts out for the three-point shot. And look at Bowers reach in, knock the ball loose. They thought it was off the foot of Augman. Did it surprise you, Billy, when Augman and Johnson decided to come back this year? At that time, it looked like they would not be eligible for the tournament. Well, they had a lot of options, you know. They could have gone pro. The other thing they could have done, they could have transferred out and played for some other school, but they have... Got a timeout. With UNLV coming back from six down to take a one-point lead. The other end. a steal by Murray working hard Wallace didn't realize Day was behind him Bowers make a move past Augman driving the baseline Murray his third try for a three doesn't hit that one first time today three on two on the other end oh, oh, yes! I thought that was over the basket <laughs> I thought it was over the the entire backboard Four dunks for uh, Augman in the first half. Zone is taken a little of the tempo away from Arkansas here, and now they couldn't have any luck on one side of the court, went to the other. Oh, that's, Wallace that's takes it out. That's got to be intentional. 17, he now has 18. Well, Stacy was 9 for 11 against Michigan State, 9 for 12 against Rutgers, 9 for 12 against UAB. He has put some numbers up, especially when you consider the perimeter shooters that Arkansas has out there. Bowers, three. department since last year must move it now five on the shot clock and not a good oh, God, what a pair he makes it oh an off balance that was taken too early but there's Augman alertly picking it up keeps it alive three times four times and a half is here for the first time since Denver UNLV trails at the intermission by the same margin they trailed Arkansas last year in Las Vegas UNLV came back to win that game a year ago, 101-93. 12 lead changes in the first half, and the score at halftime, Arkansas 50, and 
Nevada, Las Vegas, 46. Pat O'Brien will be back with the Prudential at the half and a Gulf War update from CBS News. After this. The oldest building on the campus here at the University of Arkansas. And number two leads number one at the intermission, 50 to 46. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer. Billy, does this surprise you at all here at the intermission? Well, it really doesn't. I'm surprised somewhat in the fact that UNLV went to the zone as much as they did. I'm also surprised they haven't been able to get the ball down in the low post to Larry Johnson. But Arkansas is a quality club. They're playing their kind of game. And when you can see, whenever it becomes a full court 90-foot type game, Arkansas goes in a spurt. Maybe, you know, even 11-0 run, I believe they had at one time. When it becomes a half court game, it's usually UNLVs. It's going to be interesting to see if this is anything like the second half of the other game that, that UNLV was behind at halftime, which we remember so well against Georgia Tech. Yeah, and they shut down uh, Georgia Tech the first nine minutes of that second half without allowing them a field goal. All right, let's check the numbers game real quick for you. Three-point shooting. UNLV has made 25%. Arkansas, six out of 13. And two of those coming from off the bench where the team has played so well. I mean, this Arkansas club has shown some depth. They've kept out of Oliver Miller out of trouble. 14 to 3. Amazing disadvantage there for UNLV. Well, that's uh, pretty much right on line. Turnovers on the season. A little above average in this uh, high-intensity game. And Augman with 19 leads UNLV. Todd Day, 4 of 11 from the floor, but he has 12 to top the Razorbacks. Team trying to become the first repeat champion since UCLA 1972 and 73. And Arkansas starts in their 2-3 matchup zone. Ackles gets the generous roll, and it's a two-point lead for Arkansas. Good job. Floor in the first half. Dumps it to Morris. Turn around. No go. And out of bounds off Day, who is blocked right into the official and takes him out also. Good job by Greg Anthony, and Anthony hurt his leg a little bit. That official really went down as Jimmy Burr. Of course, you see what what happens right here. See, Anthony goes ahead and sets the illegal screen. Burr gets hit by Todd Day and goes down. It's like he hurt his neck a little bit. I think he landed on the front row of the seats over here, Billy, against the footrest. See Todd Day crashing in beautifully on the boards, and there's that screen that should have been a foul on Anthony, not called. The reason's not called. Burr, of course, is laying on his back. Zone now with Miller in the middle. Anderson Hunt out here looking for something. Great bounce pass. And Larry Johnson ties it at 50. Well, what a pass. And a steal by Anthony. He leaps into the air, bats it down, and is able to retrieve it. What, Augman? Augman. Had in mind? Yep, but Johnson saved it also. Stacy Augman had in mind to not only save it, but to make a pass with a left hand. His first. That doesn't surprise me. The versatility. And, and not to take anything away from Larry Johnson either, because, of course, he's very versatile as well. But Stacy just can guard so many different people. To the running Rebels. Mayberry has it swatted away. And here comes a three-on-one for the running Rebels. I'm Nolan Richardson, and they score. I go timeout right here, because the run is on that he can't afford to let happen, even on his home floor. Eight it down. Into Atlas. Oh, right over Miller. And that's 10, the first 10 of the second half for UNLV. Four, same kind of start to the second half for Vegas here. Here they get a good shot off a set play here, and they've got one. Miller has it right off the glass, hat position on Apples. There's one of those excellent timeouts by a coach, get his team settled, switch. Anthony driving on Miller. Underneath there is Johnson, right below the hoop. He tips it in off his own miss. See, Hury not quite strong enough. As Lob available. Here comes Stacy Ogden. Did a good job from the weak side to give Ackles all the help he needed. Hunt with the three. Knocked out of bounds. And wait a minute. They're going to say it belongs to UNLV. This. Yep, drops it into Johnson off the back of the rim and another yep. basket for Johnson. Richardson's going to have to make a change here. Lee Mayberry in and out. Johnson with the rebound. Starts at three on two. Coming down the wing is Hunt. Augman on the follow. So Stacy Augman made a great shot there. The shot of the year so far is the one that he made against Cal State Santa Barbara. He just got off the floor quickly. Now they're able to bring in Morris on the dead ball situation for Hury. Now, that was something that had to take place because Yuri just not strong enough to guard Larry Johnson down the low post. Odessa, he played him to a standstill, 16 each. Day rattles home a three. Anything away from him, but 
you can't afford to have guys giving up scholarships, taking jobs. Can you imagine some of the jobs that could be made available? Well, that's if you really wanted to take advantage exactly. of that rule. Exactly. It's a loophole that has to be closed immediately. Miller. Miller still perfect from the floor. One-on-one -on -one against Day. Off balance. Oh, please. 25 for Augment. His career high is 34. You don't realize the ball is coming in bounds. Johnson almost stole it. Now reaching around. Thought he had the block, but he fouled Morris. That's number two on LJ. Everybody remembers Bird. That this is an unfair question. Well, uh, Alcorn State. Can you uh, imagine that's, that? That's a tough question. Indiana State, Arkansas, one of the great regional finals of all time. Bob Heaton hit that shot for the win. Here's Augman now, mounting his total to 27. Yeah, that one came down the wire with Sidney Moncrief guarding Larry Bird. Figuring Bird was going to touch it instead of him. Bob Heaton hit the shot. Mayberry makes that one. Augman is so hot, he takes it <laughs> and makes it again. He's pulled up, hit the jumper, playing great defense on day. Down shot, running with it. And now Johnson on the rebound. They've got Hunt leaving early. Now the problem for Nolan Richardson, he's already called one timeout. His team's in serious trouble now. A slam dunk by Johnson. The basket counts. Not only buried it, he almost took the rim off. Now Bowers did the right thing. He got out of his way. You can see the strain starting to come on some Arkansas faces and a relaxed nature in UNLV. Mayberry, three-point shot, way short. Spencer with the rebound. Good pass to Hunt. He's out ahead of everyone. His second dunk of the game, and it's a 12-point lead, largest lead of the game for UNLV. So going to this man-to-man -man and shut all that perimeter shooting down. Now he's there on the floor. He won't stop Hunt this time. Fury coming down, but Hunt scores again. LV, as we summarize, with a 14-point lead, the 29 to 11 edge in this half, and Ogden moving in on career numbers for him. Oliver Miller, six for six from the floor. Mayberry takes a step. Good shot by Mayberry. Ogden posting up on day. Didn't realize Miller was behind him. Miller pulls down the rebound, but no! Does not get the outlet pass to Murray. It's taken away by Hunt. Miller gets another one. Miller blocks it. <laughs> he has six blocks, Billy, today. Mayberry forcing the bit. Miller now seven for seven from the floor. Clump. Augman able to drop it in to Johnson and traveling on UNLV. Larry Johnson was just waiting to get some space there to put it in. Defense. Oh, good step out. Great play by Spencer. Stepped out, then dropped back and got the steal. Three on one, Hunt. That was a sensational play by Spencer. There's another nice job stepping up. This time it'll be Greg Anthony's turn. Nope. Can't find the handle, but Johnson will finish it off. Two excellent plays by Spencer on the defensive end of the floor. Here's Wallace taking the jumper. Rose of El Wallace. Before the season's over, you have to see Wallace playing a lot more time. Points on the board. Spencer. Oh, it looked like all ball. Oh. It is. <laughs> yes. Official into that one. The, in, the initial CBS. Good Yuri. try, baseline. Got right past Spencer and Ackles. Well, Spencer was concentrating so much on Miller, he wasn't ready. Hunt launching the high arching three. No one Miller was coming right at him. That's some kind of threes. The other team is in all kinds of trouble. There they are. We talked about that at the start of the show. You know, if they're better than two for five, they're they're so tough. And he is breaking long as well. Good steal. On this team and say uh, who was the MVP. Hunt now has 23 as Bowers comes back in for Murray. And Jim, when you look at this arena, you have to think of Eddie Sutton, the man that really brought big time basketball here to Arkansas. A man who's doing the job at Oklahoma State could become the first man in the history of NCAA Division I to take four different teams to the NCAA tournament. That Creighton, of course, Arkansas, Kentucky, and now Oklahoma State. There's a steal. Bad pass. Anthony. Clobbered by Day on the way up. Upset. You know, <laughs> you're like two basketball sickos. They're already talking about matchups. Who's going to be paired where? Who's going where? And 
He, I thought you were with the rebound to keep it through Arkansas. Arkansas, not, that's Miller's first miss of the day. Arkansas just not getting the kind of shots they want. There's one you want. Good cross-court passing. Curry inside today. Another one in an Indiana or Duke. Johnson. Double on the way up. Yep. Double pump. That's the case of the strength. Great body control, too, for a man of that size. He's having a hard time getting up and down the court. That ball was tipped and somehow bounced off the glass and in. See, Oliver Miller is just worn out. He can't get to the spots anymore. And Nolan Richardson has no timeouts. Of course, being this far down, he's got to keep him in the game, but his team is very tired of UNLV fans, Walter Payton, and why the Rebels? Why are you such a big fan of the Rebels? You know, I, I've been a fan of the Rebels for about nine and a half years, and... Uh, you liked them when they were losing. I, that's right. And because of the style they played, they were very aggressive. They had a lot of fun. And uh, just like with the Chicago Bears, we had a losing season when I first started. I stayed with it. We ended up winning the Super Bowl, and the same thing happened with these guys. They had the Cinder Cinderella season last year. Did you talk to him before this game? I know you gave him a pep speech before uh, the final last year. Yes, I, uh, I had breakfast with him this morning, and I gave him a talk. I told him, hey, just calm down, play um, within yourself. Don't let the crowd take you out of what you do best. Yes or no, do you miss football? Uh, I missed uh, being around the players, the camaraderie. I don't miss all the bumps and bruises. We miss you. Thank you, Walter. Back to you guys. All right, Pat, you know, there's another great athlete here today, and the super center fielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Andy Van Slyke, one of the biggest hoop fans you'll ever find. He's Boy, that was a quiet 20, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. 21 now and an 18-point lead. Against two centers, it's caused him to, to really be fatigued. There was an example. Yep, didn't jump high. Exactly. This time this jump also. Ackles swats it out to Anthony. Over to Hunt. And here comes Ackles trailing. Score it and a foul. Now, you can see Ackles was able to go up higher than Miller, tap the ball, and those two players, as we said at the top of the show, KO, O, and 10 to give has really been a big advantage for UNLV in this game. I'm really impressed by Ackles, a young man who did not take up basketball until his junior year in high school. He was a soccer goalie. Big man that played soccer at a young age to having those quick feet. <laughs> Miller follows his own miss with a little tip in. You think of Akeem Olajuwon, right. Patrick Ewing. Now they just bring it out high to Ogden. 20 on the shot clock. Oh, what a pass. Bouncing it inside. Johnson oh. reverse. What a pass by Stacey Ogden. Mayberry with a three. Short again. And Ogden with a steal. So we just go ahead and give him the Chevy MVP check right now. Here's Johnson trailing, scoring, and 25 now for Johnson. And there again, the unselfish nature of this club. Up could be. Two, two uh, All-American players. They're going to throw one out at Shaquille O'Neal. He is really Shaquille, which is little one, Rashawn, which is warrior, O'Neal, which is his mother's surname. Mm -hmm. So the little the little one is a warrior. And believe me, people who watch that game this, today will see that he certainly is. Augman gets it to Johnson. Back out to Ackles. This team's starting to have fun now. Kind of greatness, the way they played Princeton and took them out of their very patented offense. They showed it here again today in terms of coming on a court like this one and just taking a team right out of their game plan. Even oh, at home. <laughs> Bad place to schedule a game. Oh, a call a foul on Larry Johnson. And good job. You can see Greg Anthony right away. Our golf with commentator, Jim Cottle in baseball. Irv Cross, I know, I know the answer Randy already. Cross, or Mary Carrillo? I know the answer already. Okay. The, the guy number one, Gary McCord. You know what? <laughs> yeah. He got kicked off the team. You know why? He was hitting nine iron shots from half court and didn't even really realize what sport he was playing. Oh, a block on the way up. No, they say goaltending on Ackles. Side, right. side. Yes, sir. I bet you Tark doesn't remember him. I talked to him about it a little bit. He said, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure he did. Oh, that should be offensive goaltending. They tipped it in, but they'll score it. Well, nice little delay game by UNLV, particularly to take this team and make them chase him a little bit. Well, he might not have two on his fingers, but this club right now is going to take it's going to take an awful lot to keep one of them off his finger. And they reach the 100-point mark. Some gambles here. They hit on a hand by Augman, I believe, his second of that Olympic team. Any idea who you think will be the youngest U.S. Olympic member in 92? In 92, it'll be a professional player. I I'd say Shaquille O'Neal might have that chance. Uh, David Robinson, maybe. Mm -hmm. Viable again because he can step outside. Back 
goals. And he turns around and hollers in the face of uh, Oliver Miller. This was a team, an Arkansas team, which led 50 to 46 at halftime. And a three by Day. Uh-oh, Day and Ogden. Now, yep. now, here's the problem. He will be out of the game here. And long time, oh. long term ramifications. And here's where Tark has got to go to the bench. Ogden is going to be out of this game. What dictates the fight? The officials were very lenient on that particular play because there's no question that Stacy Augman threw the forearm shiver right in Todd Day's face. That certainly could have been cause for a suspension. All they called was an intentional foul. And talk about the fighting rule now in college basketball, Billy. Well, the big change, and it certainly has had an effect on the college game, is that this year, the first time you're involved in a fight, it's a suspension. There's Oliver Miller, and again, that shows the, the sign of fatigue, which makes power of us all, and that's what's happened here in the second half. Congratulations to all of them, of course. Uh, in the college level, Bob Knight will be going in. Larry O'Brien, the late Larry O'Brien, was uh, also voted in. Day takes the three. Could have cut it to 10. And Johnson... Oh, here now, there's what I was talking about. That this time, Day connected with the official. Now, now, see, you've got two great players in trouble of being... A chance of being suspended. Now, that's unnecessary. There was a lot on the line for both of these teams. They'll probably see each other again. There's a good chance of that. Now, you know, a punch is a punch. It does not have to connect to be considered a fight. Jim is. If the ejection is going to be considered for fighting. You'll see right there is a foul. There's no question about it. Now, when Day came across with that punch, I mean, that has got to be called a fight. Yeah, it's, you certainly haven't thrown him out of the game for... Uh, for just a verbal exactly. altercation. Much... They called technicals also on uh, the day in Johnson. That went with the ejection. Oh, one of the officials and Donato has told him the players were not ejected for fighting. They were ejected for unsportsmanlike no, a very play. Lean, very lenient call on the part of the officials. And I... And that's uh, information now confirmed by the Arkansas coaches on the bench that uh, flanks us here. Foul called on Oliver Miller. Where will they place Arkansas, however, because Midwest plays West in the national semifinals. Will they send them to Southeast and or East? Zone, Vegas played man-to-man -man the second half. It was so effective for them. First time they've gone back into their zone just to try to occupy a little clock in the defensive end as well which they are in the driver's seat right now. Fury fouls uh, Greg Anthony. And not to come again. I mean, could you imagine if the Duke team, as an example, were to face uh, UNLV? Don't tell me that the, that the loss would, would favor Duke. They'd have to remember that. Three points. They have a 30-game win streak. Gary Tarkanian's 30th year as a coach. Well, you remember the closest that they have come to being beat since that UC Santa Barbara loss was Ball State. Ball State. A lot of pride in this club. You know, they say they do not discuss the, the fact that they have a chance to make history. They never talk about it, they say. But One of the reasons for that is that their coach doesn't get hung up in all that type of conversation. I believe just play to the best of your ability. You know, I... I, I... Murray jumper connects and it's a 10-point difference and Miller would have been better off letting that one go final five seconds well this, uh, team Billy is it a dynasty in the desert well this team has proven today certainly that they're ready to go to the very next level and take the tournament a chance to join UCLA with back-to-back -back championships first time since Well, it wasn't meant to be. UNLV, the running Rebels, beat Arkansas 112, 105. One versus two is over, and UNLV continues to be number one. The Chevrolet players of the game are Stacy Augman from UNLV and Oliver Miller 
from Arkansas and the check in the form of $1,000. Hey, Pat, thank you very much. And, Jerry, you found yourself in a very unusual situation, trailing at halftime, but you just came out smoking in the second half. What did you tell them at the intermission? I tell you, the last three minutes, we played about as good a second half as you could play. What we did at second half is we went back to our man-to-man -man and, and just, you know, they were going one-on-one -on -one primarily, and we were giving help, and they were kicking the ball out. So our number one concern was just to keep them in front of us and not let them beat us on the dribble and make them shoot over us. And I thought defensively the second half for about 17 minutes we were pretty good. Jerry, I've got to ask you, what happened out there on the floor in the second half? I had a couple of altercations that scarred, somewhat scarred this game today. Well, at the end, I, you know, uh, uh, I thought Todd Day hit Larry, and Larry retaliated. You know, he really should have done that because they could have cost us the ball game. But uh, you know, it's just one of those things. Let's go over to Leslie Fisher a second. She's got Nolan Richardson. Coach, you, you led by four points at the half. Where and how at the start of the second half did it slip away? Well, you know, Vegas has got a great basketball team. Uh, we we're probably very fortunate to be where we were at halftime. We felt pretty good about ourselves. But again, you know, it, it, you can't make a lot of mistakes against a team that can play with some of the NBA ball clubs. And I was, you know, at that point, I could see that uh, white teams could really get blown away because they're so tough. Well, we're not sure about them playing against an NBA team, but maybe you'll run into them again in early April. Let's go up to Pat O'Brien. 